Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm coming to you from the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland. It's actually quite warm and hot today, unlike the other day when I was here previously where it rained on me so hard that I had to abort my mission, didn't really get the shots that I wanted, so I'm back today and hopefully we'll be able to get some awesome birds. In particular I'm hoping to find rose crown fruit doves and wumpu fruit doves, a few very elusive birds. These guys are always very high up in the tree, never come to the ground, so finding a good angle would definitely be a challenge. And there will also be a few other challenges with this shoot, like heat, haze, and autofocus, and the focal length I'm using. And I will guide you throughout this video and show you how I deal with these challenges in the field. There's the first photo. It's just that little bit too high up in the tree and covered by the fruits. Oh look, there's another couple birds. It's such a tease to see these stunning birds up close, but not being able to get any good photos just yet. At the moment, all the birds are quite high up in the tree, giving me two steep angles and kind of unpleasant looking backgrounds. I walked back a little bit because I saw some birds high up in the tree being up on this hill and using 1200 millimeters of focal length should allow me to get some nice shots. Oh wow, look at that. Wow, that's beautiful. Beautiful. How amazing are those birds? Go a bit closer, trying to get a bit of a different background. Definitely have a bit of an issue with heat haze, so I just keep firing away and hope that I get a few sharp shots. Shooting at ISO 3200 f10, 640th of a second. Because I'm hand holding, I need a little bit more shutter speed. So I always try to have my elbow in my body as well and then pressing it against my face, stabilizing it more. You might wonder why I'm shooting with high ISO all the time, even though it's quite a nice bright day. And the main reason is that with the two times extender, I'm wide open at F8 and I usually stop down to like F9 or F10. And then to get enough shutter speeds for the moving birds and birds throwing back the berries, I just need the high ISO to get enough shutter speed to not end up with a lot of blurry images. And if you know what you're doing when it comes to image editing, like I teach you in my master class and use a good noise reduction software, using high ISO like 3200 or 6400 is really not a problem at all. Always trying to find a gap in the trees to get a good angle. There we go. Just love how these birds climb all over this fruit and eat all these berries. Normally a dove you'd think wouldn't do much, but this dove is almost like an acrobat. Crazy. Oh, Wumpu fruit up. Just flew in the tree right above me. I need to go back up the hill and see if I can get a better angle. Up on this hill, I should be able to get some shots, so let's see what we can get. Wow, look at that beautiful bird. Stunning. I can't believe how they just hang upside down and do all these wild acrobatics. I just moved spots again, and now there's this incredible fruit duff right in front of me out in the open i hope you can see it in the background giving me some amazing opportunities using the electronic shutter now because the first curtain electronic shutter seem to be a tiny bit more jumpy when it comes to in focus shots so using the electronic shutter has given me the best results today Stunning. What magnificent birds. Oh, don't go. Oh, it's done cold. Let me quickly move to the left so I can get a better background. I've never photographed a male cold before, so this has been a nice little surprise. 
Colts actually belong to the cuckoo family, so they're not very welcomed by other birds, and people also don't really like them because they call a lot, and even in the middle of the night. You might be wondering, why am I so far away from these trees? And the reason is simple. Because the birds are usually quite high up feeding on these fruits, the best way to get a sort of eye level with the birds is to step as far back as possible. And because there's a little hill here, it helps me as well. So I walk as far back as possible on top of the hill and use my longest available focal length. In this case, it's my R5 with a 600mm RF f4 lens and a 2 times 6 So I'm shooting at 1200mm, allowing me to get an almost eye level looking image, even though I'm actually still shooting quite high up into the tree. If you were going to use a shorter lens, like 100 to 500, what I did at the start here, it just simply doesn't work. If you get too close to the birds, the angle gets so steep and you're basically just getting bum shots with a sky background. And if you get walking further back with the 100 to 500, then the bird's just too small in the frame. So having the 600 with the 2 times extender allows me to walk far enough back to get a nice green background and a nice looking decent angle. Shooting difficult birds high up in the tree is definitely one of those occasions where I really value that I have a 600mm prime lens because it allows me to get shots that I'm simply not able to get with other lenses. I could also use an R7 to get even more reach, but I find the R5 a little bit more reliable in terms of the autofocus and because I'm expecting these birds to crawl throughout the berries and look for the berries, I think the autofocus will often get distracted and in this case I want to be a little bit more reliable so I'm using the R5. I could also use my R3 I'm currently filming on but then I only have 24 megapixels and I think I definitely need to crop some of these shots because I'm so far away and then the 24 megapixels doesn't leave me much room whereas the 45 megapixels on the R5 should give me just the right amount to get some nice frame filling shots still. I brought my tripod even though I will mainly do handheld shooting because I have to maneuver around find gaps in the branches to get photos of these birds but I also brought the tripod because I want to do some video and for video a tripod is definitely a must especially with a long big lens. These birds are quite strange they always sit around for like an hour or two doing nothing and then they ambush these berries for like 30 seconds to a minute and then fly back into the tree and do nothing. So I've just been walking around a little bit trying to see if I can find some other birds or bird perch in a tree somewhere. But so far no luck, but hopefully I can see some more. There's the coal again. Nice. How amazing are these birds? <laughs> I think I'm getting some really nice shots now. The autofocus is definitely one area where I struggle a little bit because it jumps off the bird onto the berries and the birds back a lot. So I've been using a mix of the eye autofocus and the spot autofocus trying to switch it up and stay on the bird. As you can see, if you know the right techniques in the field and also when it comes to image editing, you can get some really nice results in almost all situations. And this is why I would love to help you to gain more confidence with the image editing and become better and get better results. So I would suggest that you check out my pro sets down there in the description where you can with just one click transform your raw files and also check out my masterclass where I teach you step by step everything you need in Photoshop to get amazing results and to be confident when it comes to the image editing. So if that's of interest to you, make sure to check this out down there in the description. I was just about to pack up and then this fruit dove landed right out there in the tree on the open berry branch. Absolutely amazing. It's a bit higher eyes on now because it's getting a bit darker. But wow, how good is that? Definitely the shots of the day. Wow. I hope you guys enjoyed our little afternoon out and about. And I think we got some really nice images. There was definitely a few challenges. I had to move around a lot, use the tripod, run up the hill, do some handheld shooting. But in the end, I think we got some nice images. The autofocus struggled from time to time, jumping on and off the bird and onto the berries. But by using the double back button autofocus and the eye focus and the spot focus on different buttons, I think I managed to get at least some really nice and sharp photos. The 600 millimeter with the two times extend is obviously a little bit of a compromise, but on the R5, the image quality is still 
stunning and I'm confident that the images will look really good. And by doing the opposite to what we normally do, instead of going closer to the bird, getting further away from the bird, we also managed to kind of lessen the steep angles we were dealing here with and got some nice, almost eye level looking photos. So all in all, I'm super happy with this shoot. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up for the video. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and also check out my channel membership. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.